You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby. Thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Joining us as he does every Tuesday, Charlie Five, Auburn message board legend. Yes. And this is now the second pod that we've recorded. We got yeah. done recording. Then Justin Hokinson of um, AuburnLive.com broke the news that Mike Bobo is no longer Auburn's offensive coordinator. He will not be returning Wild. next season. And we're like, can we salvage anything? Nope, absolutely not. So um, <laughs> my instant reactions from this is a little surprised he did it, but I love that Harson is like, no, we want to win right now. That's kind of the reports coming out is that's, that's Harson's focus, and he's trying to send that to the team. And it's my way or the highway. If you can't help us win games right now, you're not going to stick around this program. And I think uh, I think Bobo, he struggled in the second half or the offense struggled in the second half down the stretch, the most important part of the season. I think that matters. Mm-hmm. I think that's something that probably ticked Brian Harson off, especially since he's an offensive guy. So, okay. Am I a little surprised? Yes, but does it make sense? Yeah, absolutely. It makes sense. And then at the same time, like, I, 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 I want to give Brian or Coach Harson the, the benefit of the doubt here. But, like, it doesn't change the fact that our, our offensive roster is absolutely terrible. And that, that doesn't change that fact at all. So something had to happen where uh, I just – I hope it's not that we think that the, the roster is better than it actually is and they just didn't develop under under Bobo. Um, I don't – I mean, hopefully that's not the case. Maybe there's still uh, – there's still going to be this push to recruit, 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 like he said. Um, I'm I'm kind of blown away. I'm kind of blown away. I thought that there was some growth in some areas. Um, I thought Bo looked a lot better in areas um, under Bobo. Um, but you know, this dude don't play. This dude does not play. And no, you almost I'm wonder. You know, I, I almost wonder. I almost wonder if Bobo was sort of forced on him from the beginning. Um, because Bobo was Kevin Steele's, uh, Kevin Steele's offensive coordinator when that whole plan mm-hmm. came together. So, you know, is that the case? I don't know. Is that why it took so long for Drew Bobo to finally commit? Uh, because he wasn't sure if his dad was going to be there or not. Because there was, you know, button heads or whatever the whole right. the whole time. Like, who knows? I don't. I don't know. But um, the Bo Nick situation makes so much more sense now. Um, there, there's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it because so Bo went on the show the next round as he has done every Monday throughout the season with an NIL deal there. And they asked him about it because they asked him in response to, you know, his quote that he did with an interview with CBS for the Iron Bowl broadcast. And he kind of just said he's exploring his options and the options are on the table. That's kind of the the quote that's been pulled out and, and, and thrown everywhere. But when you go and watch it, it's like – I didn't really feel like he was leaving. Yeah. But um, now it totally makes sense. And it's funny because I believe in that interview, a few questions later, he's asked by one of the hosts, do you like Mike Bobo's offense? And Bo's like, yeah, I like his offense a lot. <laughs> so yeah. now that he's gone, it's like, oh, okay, maybe Bo. Yeah, you're right. Now it totally makes sense. You know what? Where is he going to go now? Um, is he going to stay at Auburn? Because then this follow Mike Bobo wherever he goes. Um, This this will be Bo's fourth OC in four years. Yeah, if 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 he stays at Auburn, right, it will be his fourth offensive coordinator in four years. So that can't excite him. That can't excite him at all. So his only options are transfer somewhere with a similar offense, so I can have some semblance of continuity. Or say screw it, I'm going to take my chances with the NFL and not do go through a whole nother, you know, year of learning a new system for the fourth year in a row mm-hmm. when my job, <clears throat> you know, my job's on the line and this is the weakest quarterback class that we've possibly ever seen, right? Uh, at least, uh, you know, since 2013. Mm-hmm. Shout out Geno Smith, EJ Manuel. What an era! What an era of NFL what quarterbacks. <laughs> so I don't know. It's Eric Kiesel, right? 
That's Auburn Snacks OC. So, all right. So it's either this is this is my opinion. And for those he, unaware, Key Sal followed Harson from Boise. He was an analyst, and then when Cornelius Williams got fired as a wide receivers coach, Key Sal took over. Right, right. Um, either it's Key Sal or this is something that's already in the works for someone else. And the reason why is because, in my opinion, call it shady or not, whatever, uh, firing somebody before National Signing Day is not very smart, um, especially when you have, you know, several recruiting relationships built into, like, we're really trying to work on flipping a couple of guys, um, uh, flipping a couple of guys on the offense uh, and – you know, maybe built some momentum, and then, you know, that that that, that kind of makes me feel like either a it is key out, or po- there's possibly already something in the works that we'll hear about pretty quick. I wouldn't expect it to drag out. Can we talk about long. the recruiting thing just for a second? Just for a second. Sure. So Cole Pinkson, at the time of us recording this with with Auburn Live, um, and and they've been all over this. I haven't even seen anybody else put anything out. Auburn Live is killing it and hoax specifically and, and coach pink and Jeff Lee, they're doing a great job, but um, in the corner message board, that's where you live. You live there, but uh, coach pink said uh, he's got a thread um, commits and targets react to Bobo news. And he's like getting, you know, he's posting live responses and he posted one for Damari Austin, which I think is most Auburn fans favorite uh, commitment in this class. And it's got Damari Austin, his response lost for words. And then Coach Pink asked, does this affect your commitment? He said, nah, not at all. <laughs> love that. Love that. Um, this is funny, too. I think, like, one of the first couple of replies, it's, uh, you know, Cole just basically said, I'll keep updating this thread with, <laughs> with recruits' reactions. And the first – like, one of the first response was, I'm scared. I'm scared about you updating this thread. <laughs> I'm terrified <laughs> to watch it be updated. Yeah. <laughs> It was kind of crazy. That's kind of crazy, man. I, I, I was, I wasn't expecting. I, I definitely wasn't expecting it, you know, today. But um, it to, makes uh, sense. If you're gonna do it, do it. But um, a lot of things make sense now. Drew Bobo. Why did Drew Bobo drag his feet the whole time uh, and not commit when everybody knew he was going to commit to his dad? Probably because he wasn't 100 percent sure he was going to be here. You know, well, what we I mean? were we were told that he loved Georgia. Because yep. you know he grew up you know around Georgia, that, that's what we were told, and like that makes sense. His dad spent fourteen years there, like that. That totally makes sense. But I think an interesting line in Justin Hokinson's story, breaking the news, um, is the decision was finalized by first year coach Brian Harson on Monday. Do you think that's that's just an interesting wording? And I'm sure Hoke did that on purpose. Um, was it finalized. talked about it in Harsh? Yeah, finalized. That's that's the word that's hanging me up there. So was it discussed? And then Harson's like, "Yeah, we're doing this." Yeah, um, that wording, uh, the the decision was finalized. Uh, that that makes it seem like it's something that was already in the process. And then it, this was just the f- finality of it. Is mm-hmm. um, he just went ahead and ended him just today? Yep, yep. just today, finalized today this is it the putt to win the tournament if you sink it the championship is yours but on your backswing your hat falls over your eyes you can't see is this how you're running your business or visibility because you're still relying on spreadsheets and outdated finance software to see the full picture you need to upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle 93% of surveyed businesses increase their visibility and control after upgrading to NetSuite Over 27,000 businesses already use NetSuite, and right now, through the end of the year, NetSuite is offering a -a one-of-a-kind financing program to those ready to upgrade at netsuite.com slash locked on NCAA. That's netsuite.com slash locked on NCAA. Charlie Five, today's show also brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. They are the leader in college sports daily fantasy. They do hate you because you keep winning money. Taking them. them to the woodshed. No, it's tons of fun. Tons Every of fun. Every Saturday and Sunday night, you send me a screenshot of your winnings, and it's like, oh my gosh, you're going to put prize picks out of business. I hope you don't do that. But it, it's, um, it's awesome. It, it's real awesome. quick, real quick, dude. You you pick two picks, do the power play. All you got to do is pick, uh, one, win one out of three bets, and you break even. One out of three. Anybody can go one out of three. Like, let's go. Yeah. yeah. Get it going. I, I, I don't fully understand, like, I don't know. It, it, it legit. It, it is set up for you to win. Like it, win. Yeah. it really yeah. is. So Absolutely. go to 
Go to prizepicks.com or search uh, Prize Picks in your phone's app store. Their app will pop up there, an award winning app, by the way. And use promo code LOCKED ON. You'll get a 100% um, bonus up to $100. So you deposit 100, you get 100 free to play with. Don't hesitate. Check out prizepicks.com. Use promo code LOCKED ON or go to your app store today. All right. We've got to throw this out there. And you mentioned, you know, maybe something's already in the works and they've got their guy. I just want to put out there, I'll be shocked if it's not Eric Kiesel when it's all said and done. That's just that's just be. my hunch. I will be too. Um, I will be too. Um apparently um Harson had a special like personal guest for the Auburn Ole Miss game. Um and it was this uh Matt Wells, the head coach at Texas Tech until October, former OC and head and head coach at Utah State. Um that seems to be a name that could be floating around. Uh, Matt but Wells. Okay. Matt Wells. Don't know anything about him. Don't know anything about him. Just wanted to throw that out there. That came from JG Tate from AuburnSports.com. So, if it's up to uh, you, if it's up to you, Charlie Five, do you call Dan Mullen? No, he's toxic right now. He's toxic right now. Oh, I think you. I think you have to make him tell you no. I think you have to. I'm. Uh, Especially if you I just want can't get, I can't get on board. I can't get on board with him. I know he's a good play caller, and uh, maybe that's all you really need him to do. He just seems like an NFL offensive coordinator. Like, I don't feel like he 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 relates with kids. Um, you know, he just always seems to be put, either putting his foot in his mouth or being sure. goofy talking about it'll be recruiting season after the season's over. Like, just stuff. He he just he is toxic waste right now. You cannot. You can't touch. I him. get it. I get it. Um, Jeff Libby will be a name Love um, that over, but with Ole Miss. Yeah, I don't know why. For sure. I, I mean, it's the same job, but you get out from Lane Kiffin. I don't know. You get to he, say I assume he's not calling own, plays. Man. He's not calling plays, is he? I mean, he's the two offensive coordinators. He's coached for Josh Heupel and Jeff and and Lane Kiffin. So, you know, I guess Brian Harson is an offensive guy, but he clearly does not have his hand. Mm-hmm in the play calling because uh, he just acts the dude for not calling plays very well, <laughs> like <laughs> after five minutes. So uh, it could, could be, um, but yeah, uh, it's coaching, coaching carousels can be kind of fun. So uh, maybe they'll be yeah. good. I, I like I tell you who I, Let me tell you who I would get. Let me tell you how I would okay. get. I go throw the bank at Del McGee, go get Del McGee, bring him to Auburn, Harson, put him under your wing. This is that'd be a double edge, the number one uh, recruiter on Georgia staff. Uh, he played at Auburn. He is their co-offensive coordinator. Go get him. He is now. their. Uh, his title is run game coordinator at Georgia. Yeah. So, whatever that means, he puts together the running plays. I don't care what he does at all. I don't They're care. I don't care. Just bring it. Go get Dale and bring him home. That would be. That would be. That'd be my first. That'd be my first call for sure. Okay. I like that. You think he can call uh, plays? Or do do you think there's part of Harson that wants to call plays? I don't know. Has Harson ever called plays as a head coach? I don't even know. I don't think he did at Boise. I don't either. I think Keesaw was his off, uh, you know, right before he left. I I know Keesaw's like the boring answer and all of this but it's like it makes so much sense and, and i don't i don't hate it either because uh that opens up wide receiver uh the wide receiver coach uh position and you can go find you he's learned that you get half the recruit go hire a dog recruiter go get you mm-hmm. one go get you one go get you a stud recruiter uh that can coach wide and that's receivers. what we thought he had that's what he thought we were i mean we thought cornelius was going to be you know this 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 stud recruiter and it just didn't really happen that way but yeah i like that too because it allows you to kind of get more of a you know more of what you want on your staff if you do it that way but man i I mean i've heard stuff that like whenever the receiving coach thing was happening um that like he wanted to bring keysal from the get-go but he couldn't because keysal like stuck around at boise um because he thought he was going to kind of get moved up there and that staff didn't retain him and so that that's why it was so late and so he had to be an analyst and then um, I'm sure there was also pressure of like, hey, Harson, you can't bring everyone from Boise over with you. I'm sure that had something to do sure. with it. Sure. Uh, I, I, and you're, prob- you're probably right there. And, and the whole Keesaw thought, um, 
Keesaw thought he was going to be the offensive coordinator at Boise mm-hmm. too. Right. So, uh, and maybe I, I'm still I'm still kind of curious. Is this, was the Bobo thing forced on on Coach Harson? It makes I'm sense. Sti- yeah, it does. And hey, I'm just going to go ahead and say, like Will Friend, I was about to bring that up. Will Friend's probably going to be gone too. Um, not impressed with his recruiting. Like that was one of the things that uh, that was one of the things that you know the calling card. Will Friend, the recruiter. R- Will Friend, right. the recruiter. And um, you know he got. You know he it's got just, Drew Bobo. He, Harris, Easton, Easton Harris. Maybe I. Get, I mean it would have to be because the other guy be. he got is like okay. Well, his dad's on staff, so it's yeah, like his dad's the coach. Yeah, right. I don't know, man. It's weird, weird, but it's kind of, it's just kind of crazy. Like this dude don't care. You better get it done or you're gone. No questions well, asked, and you're gonna be gone quick th- too. And this is um this is kind of generated rumor about like. Was Derek Mason on the hot seat, so he changed up what he was doing this past Saturday? Yeah, I mean, there we were. I mean, it seemed we were seemingly a little bit more aggressive. Um, we did bring several different, you know, blitz from the safety, blitz from the corner, blitz from the linebackers. Uh, we did blitz a little bit more. Um, still, a lot of the same base stuff that he called, but it just seemed like maybe he was a little bit more aggressive at times. Uh, than than others, so maybe maybe he was maybe he was coaching for, maybe he was coaching for his job too. I, I don't know. Right. So this news has only been out for like twenty minutes when we started recording this, but and I've gone back to kind of check to see if they've updated any the stories. But we're we're under the belief, and that's why I read hoax line. You know where Harson finalized the decision on Monday. But like that that. I just want to clarify, like that means he got fired, right? This is not Bobo leaving Auburn. Yeah, I mean that's typically what it is. Resigned, sure. um, you know that. Typically I think means. he had didn't he have like two years left on his contract of like guaranteed money? Like, uh, why, like he wouldn't walk away from that, right? That's a good point too. How does that work as far as buyouts? Mm-hmm. That's just. More buy, more buyouts, more buyouts. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, if but, you're if you're Bobo, you want to get fired so you can get that. Yeah, I mean, you're right. You want to so, get fired, you're, and then you, you know, go chill at the house for a little bit. It's good gig. It's wild. Good. I'm still kind of, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still kind of blown away. Um, I didn't expect that. Kind of caught Derek me off guard. safe, right? Who knows? He should be. Who knows? Um, I, surely, what he did Saturday proved that he deserved to be there, right? Yeah, I mean. I, I don't – I mean, outside of Mississippi State, I kind of feel like we played pre- pretty dang good on defense all year. There were some frustrating things, us getting used to the game style that he called, yeah. the, the, a lot more bend, don't break, not very aggressive. But it worked. We kept points off the board. And for the most point, for the most part, outside of, you know, one, maybe two games, the defense did not cost us games. It was the offense. Uh, and, the, and, the you know, the roster, play calling – quarterback situation, whatever you want to, you know, attribute that to, you know, the offense is what – I mean, think about this. Think about this. I saw somebody talk about this. We played Texas A&M in mm-hmm. Alabama, and we gave up one touchdown. And that the defense gave up one touchdown to those two teams. One touchdown to Texas right. A&M and Alabama. That's, that's insane. That is insane. Now, I don't have a whole lot of respect for Texas A&M's offense, but still, like, not allowing a defensive touchdown in that game at all is incredible. Yeah, that's great. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I, I would be – that would be – that would that would be a head-scratcher for sure. Yeah. Oh, sorry to cut you off there. I, I want to chat about um, recruiting, how this affects recruiting, and then also um, athletic director Alan Green's hand – and all this. But first, today's show is brought to you by our friends at Boost Mobile. You listen to podcasts for the power of the inside track. You switch to Boost Mobile for the power of saving money. Get three unlimited data lines for 30 bucks a month per line and a free 5G phone when you switch so you can get the latest sports news all on one of America's largest 5G networks. More power to save Boost Mobile. Disclaimer, free phone limited to new customers and one per line. Additionally, res- additional restrictions apply Offers and coverage not available everywhere or for all phones or networks. See boostmobile.com for details. Today's show also brought to you by our friends at betonline.ag. BetOnline has you covered all season for more props, odds, and lines than ever before. 
as football season continues as the March for the playoffs in the NFL or bowl season um, for college. And of course you got um, your, your conference championships this weekend. Bet online remains your number one spot for all sports action this season. Head over to betonline.ag, sign up, make a free account. And then when you make your first deposit, use promo code locked on to receive your 50% welcome bonus. Uh, this promo code locked on bet online where the game starts. Let's so <laughs> Alan green, do you think he's giving Harson room to kind of make all of these decisions? Do you think Harson's just doing it? Do you think Harson's going to him as a case by case basis? Obviously surprised a lot of people with how they handled the wide receiver coach situation a few weeks into the season. Now, after one year, hi, uh, you know, letting go of his offensive coordinator, where do you think Alan Green fits into all of this? Is he checked out? I mean, does he, does he fit into any? I don't know that he fits into anything, uh, any of it. Um, okay. I like Al. I like Allen. Uh, I think it's kind of clear that um, either there's some people at Auburn that don't that aren't crazy about him. He may not be crazy about Auburn. He's interviewed at several different places. Right. Uh, no, no fault whatsoever. I mean, I get it. If you're not, if you don't feel wanted or you just don't like a place, you might want to go, you know, try to better yourself. I don't have any issues with that. So I wonder, is this, this is this whole like Alan Green being a great athletic director and, and being, uh, giving his guy free reign to do what he uh, thinks he needs to do? Or is it just he doesn't care right now right. whatsoever? I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. So, how quick do they hire someone? Oh, um, surely it's got to be quick. I mean, I bet it's Key Sal by the end of the week. I, if I was a betting guy, I would say Key Sal by the end of the week for sure. Um, just because, I mean, think about guys like you got Trevante Citizen. You you talked him into who's like the one of the top, you know, two or three running backs in the country. You talked him into decommitting basically. Uh, from LSU, even though LSU doesn't have a head coach until just now, and they, they ended up hiring Brian Kelly. I think it's official. Yeah. Um, you, you talked him out of that. Um, Which is a, you, a disaster, by the way. Yeah, that, that's probably the the worst uh, – one of the worst scenarios you could get is, is Brian Kelly because he's just – he's going to be steady. He's going to be a pain in your butt. Um, but, but, yeah, so now you got – It's going to uh, be a your, worse Les Miles. That's going to be what? He's gonna be a like worse. a worse version of Les Miles. Yeah, yeah, I, that's that's fair. I think a better version of Les. I think a very similar, but but a little bit better version of Les Miles. That's good fine. enough, good enough to win ten games. Not gonna, not good enough to win much more, but just good enough to really be a thorn for Auburn. Yeah, for and sure. just I mean. re really boring style of football. Yeah, that's what, that's probably fair. That's probably fair. Anyway, go probably ahead. eats grass. I don't know. Um, I don't know what were we talking about. <laughs> Oh yeah, like you 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 talk Travante Citizen into decommitting, and then now what are you going to do? What are you going to? Uh -huh. I mean, is it just a Harson thing now? Which I guess he could he in theory could do. Is it just Harson and Caddy just making promises? That's why I think somebody's going to be. I think it's going to be something that's moved pretty quick. Everything seems to be moving so much faster now with the portal, early signing day. Um, everything just seems to be moving. Head coaching hires are made like. So fast, or maybe being made so fast right now, it's crazy. Lincoln yeah, apparently Riley, Lincoln Riley left. He got, he got <laughs> hired over a Zoom call. Zoom call. He's moving from Norman, Oklahoma, to Los Angeles. Yeah, of a over Zoom, a Zoom. One Zoom call. Like, I crazy. will say this. I will say this. If you had to get sold somewhere to go move to from where you are over a Zoom call, LA probably would not be. <laughs> South Ca Southern California probably wouldn't be the worst. Uh, I'm sure it's nice, especially when you're making the money that he's going to be making. Yes. Yeah, for yes. sure. For sure. He, he can afford it. Um, did we talk enough about Bo? I don't know if we talked enough about how this impacts Bo Nix. Yeah. Um, I mean, I just – I said that if I were him, I'd probably take my chances with the NFL, with the draft class um, and just going through another uh, offensive coordinator uh, change uh, your fourth year in. Right. You're, I just so – if you're Harson, sorry to cut you off. Yeah. My mother just texted me, Bobo, OMG. There we go. Bobo, oh no. Oh no, Bobo. Um, so you know, Harson's big thing is he wants to win now, which is great. Um, do you make your decision with Bo Nix in mind? 
Or are they separate? Is your offensive coordinator separate from your quarterback that may leave you? Uh, that's a good you, question. That's a good sit, question. If you're Harson, do you sit down with probable OC, whether it's Key Sal or I'll, whoever, and, and Bo Nix, and you just kind of all have this, you know, this powwow? Or sound, if that were the case, if that were the case, um, I don't think you would have heard the the language that you've heard from Bo that you know all options are on the table. It seems like this this was made without any care whatsoever, like about what Bo has to say about it or what Bo wants, or mm-hmm. even if it makes us lose but lose Bo Nix. Like to me, that's the way I take it because um because a lot of the language is being used. Um, and maybe it's, you know, maybe if it's somebody that Bo likes that they hire, you know, Bo will go back and say, okay, I think I'm, you know, I want to come back for my, my senior year. Uh, I, it's just, it, it just doesn't seem to me, it does, the language doesn't seem to me like Bo had, was, was a minuscule thought whatsoever in this, in this decision. Yeah. And, and I think, I don't they know if that's fair, be- but. No, I think it is. I think they should be separate decisions. Well, like the, their relationship matters, but I think they should be separate. I mean, you know what Bo Nix can do. I think Bo Nix, as far as his athleticism and his arm talent, like if you get dudes around him, I think there's very few offenses where Bo Nix couldn't operate. So maybe his versatility even makes this an easier decision if you you, you just go and get your guy. Yeah. But I – I still think, you know, Harson's biggest, you know, the biggest question surrounding Harson isn't preparation, all that. It's it's getting talent. It's got and it. how much does this decision for your offensive coordinator, like how much is he supposed to balance? Like, okay, these people are going to want to come play for this guy versus, okay, let's just get a good play caller and a good schemer and the position coaches will will bring in the talent. Like that's that's the balance that I think Harson isn't used to yet. Um, Bobo clearly didn't sure. attract a whole lot of talent when he was here. So it's like, is it going to be better or the same? Like probably, but that's, that's, that's part of this decision that, and, and the decision is probably already made. I think Harson already has a guy, but, um, that's, that, that's part of it. I think we need to follow. I'm with you hundred percent, hundred percent. Cool. Does Mike Bobo's son, Drew Bobo play at Auburn? No chance. Does no Easton chance. Harris play at Auburn? Mike Bobo's team. Uh, I would say that it that those chances drop significantly, but it is really late in the game. It's very mm-hmm. late in the game. So, and you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of Easton Harris. He's Me too. He works. He's he works hard. Local kid. But who all do we really beat out for him? I'm not 100 percent sure. Maybe Florida State. Like, what other options uh, at this level does he have? Um, I don't know. Uh, it's gonna be a fun. I would say. I would say. I would say the percentage has definitely dropped, but I don't know if it's like as much as it was for obviously Drew Bobo. Right. Right. All right. Cool. Lance just texted me. He's about to have a um his top five candidates up at auburnwire.com So be sure to Love check it. that out. Yeah. Yeah. That dude is not afraid to tick people off, and I absolutely adore it. Tell Charlie him five. Tell yeah. him to put Del McGee on the list. Del McGee's got to be on the list. All right. Maybe he'll make the cut. Um, Charlie five, where can people find you and hear you? Yeah. Find me on uh, Twitter at the underscore Charlie underscore five, uh, Auburn sports.com. I'm some Ar- Auburn live.com, the corner message board and uh, Auburn two, four, seven sports body get aboard awesome. uh, Monday through Friday. Dad by golf. Pod. There we I'll go. The best daily golf podcast out there. Hey, be sure to check out my conversation with Auburn guard Zepp Jasper. He recapped his play and the teams play uh, at at the Bahamas, what they learned about themselves. And also, they are looking ahead now. Um, Wednesday, they take on UCF. So, there you go. All that and more coming up right here on Locked on Auburn.